Hey, photography is a two-dimensional medium and obviously with that we understand come some limitations. So today's tip is about overcoming some of those limitations. It's about composition and it's been inspired by some of the great masters of photography. In this video you'll learn how to compose your photos so that you can communicate a sense of place, space and even a deeper sense of story. Hey, I'm Mitchell. For the past decade I've been living my dream journeying around the world as a professional travel photographer. During this time, I've seen and I've learned a lot. And now I want to share the knowledge with you. Come along on the journey. If you look at the work of master photographers, you'll notice that many of them have one thing in common. When they compose, they do it with layers in mind. What's the use of layers? Layers can communicate a sense of place, physical depth, texture. They can add complexity to your story. And they allow the viewer to enjoy a photograph on a deeper level. I went for another little drive to explore. And today, as you can see, I've ended up in this sort of canyon. I figured that here would be as nice a place as any to shoot this, the last of the three videos. Anyway, you probably are asking, what are layers? Most photos will have at least a main subject and a background. You can say that's two layers. However, here when I'm talking about layers, I'm referring to photos that have a clearly perceivable foreground, middle layer and background there can be more than three layers. You could say that this is one layer, this is another, this can be seen as a layer. Definitely all of this and even the far background can be seen as a layer too. However, more likely we perceive it as all of this is the foreground layer, all this area is the middle layer and the church with everything else are on the background layer. So as is often the case, of the clearly perceivable layers, there are three. Sometimes layers are pretty distinct. You can clearly see the layers here. Foreground, middle layer, background. Sometimes they're less distinct. Here you still have layers. Foreground, middle layer, background. Here too. Foreground, middle layer, background. But they're not quite as clearly perceivable. So how do you create layers? Let's get back to an idea that I mentioned in the last video, the idea of visual weight. This is very relevant to creating layers. In the last video, I was talking about color, but color is not the only thing that's responsible for making an element visually heavy or not. Size plays a role. The boat here draws our attention because it's big, but the kind of subject you're photographing is also important. The boat is big. However, we're still instantly drawn to the man at a distance. This for large part is because our eye is always more likely to gravitate to a person. If it's not a person and there's another living being, our gaze is likely to move there, even if the other non-living elements are larger. So in this case, we gravitate towards the dog. And here this bird is tiny, but it still gets our attention. An in-focus element will draw more attention than an out of focus one. The vegetation right in front of the lens takes up a lot of the frame, but the smaller church is still more visually heavy, mostly because it's in focus and the vegetation is not. Those are some of the key factors of visual weight that are relevant to composing in layers. So what next? We place elements with enough visual weight along an imaginary path, one behind another. This can be done along an imaginary diagonal, but it can be less precise placement too. The main thing is that the key elements are visible. What elements go where is something to experiment with. I'll touch on this topic more a little later on. A very quick reminder, by the time you watch this, there will be less than 24 hours left to take advantage of the massive Christmas special on my travel photography course. Biggest price drop, it's never gonna be cheaper. 
literally years of my own blood, sweat and tears poured into this course. Uh, a lot of trial and error that I went through that you don't have to go through. Uh, now, I don't do any of these gimmicky sale extensions. Uh, once it's over, that's gonna be it. So yeah, I thought I'd just put that out there. It's become ridiculously windy outside, so I'm in the car. Next thing I wanna talk about is the mindset to have for composing in layers. You need to make a conscious effort to see in layers when you compose, but you're not gonna end up with special photos if you compose in layers just for the sake of it. So why would you compose in layers? I briefly talked about this in the beginning and in the next part, I'm gonna talk in more depth about why you would compose in layers. I'll also give you some practical steps uh, for how to do it. You can create a sense of place and ambience with the foreground layer. The foreground layer can be of great use to evoke a sense of place. This happens differently than when you show a part of a place in the background at a wider angle. To do this, look for a detail that's evocative of the place, that says something about it. Then put it into the foreground layer. Here it's the curtain in a restaurant. It says that I'm next to a window and we get a sense of the breeze that's coming through. The fishing net hints that the scene is taking place in a fishing village. And the flowers in the foreground here speak about the kind of landscape and nature in which the boy lives. Now, this detail can be large or small. It can be blurred. The main thing is that it should be noticeable. If it were in the background, this detail might not grab our attention. In the foreground, it grabs our attention just enough. One thing that I like to do is to use windows as a foreground detail. If it's a car window or a windscreen, you instantly get the sense of a journey. A window in a building can give you the sense of the interior. Sometimes there are raindrops on the window or a windscreen, or there's dirt, and rather than avoid them, I like to use such little details to enhance the sense of ambience, to give a bit of a texture to the photo. You can create the sense of physical space and depth with layers. Elements on different layers can guide the eye throughout the frame. When the eyes travel through the layers towards the back and to the front again, it feels like we're moving through the frame and a sense of space is created. These photos you're seeing exemplify the idea pretty well. Leaving layers out of focus is another good technique to communicate the feel of space and depth. You can do it like I did here by blurring the front and the background layers while leaving the middle layer in focus. Or you can do it this way, front layer in focus and the rest out of focus. The only thing is if you're not placing your subjects or elements like I did here, where they still cause the eye to travel through the frame, then the blurred part can be perceived as just a single background. You still get the sense of depth, but the eye doesn't have quite the same amount of virtual space to travel through. Another thing layers are useful for is adding nuances to a sense of story. Layers can help give different amounts of importance to elements in a story. They can make your story more complex, more nuanced. A typical situation is to have a main character, a person, a building, or an animal, really anything. And this element is usually the one that's most in focus. The image is then constructed so that this main character is the one that's most visually heavy. Whatever is less important, you could call the supporting elements. They're still visible, but have less visual weight. Like this hand with a kettle pouring tea. Not as important as the nomads who I'm having tea with, but still key to creating the sense of story. Whatever is least important, but still plays some role, is made to be least visually heavy. Often, this is the background layer. It could give you a hint of where things are taking place, or it could just be something neutral like a wall or the sky. However, this element can also add a little more complexity or depth to your story, like the boats here. We see the fabrics and the man laying them out, and that's one little story there. But the boats, they hint of a different potential story altogether. This least important element can be on any layer too like this silhouette of the person in the foreground layer. 
in relation to the rest of the frame, this detail gets much less attention. But it gives us a sense that someone is watching the girl playing the violin. Just a little extra nuance in the story. So there are different ways to play around with what elements of your story to place where. You don't have to follow a specific formula. You can leave the main subject or character ambiguous. In this photo, you don't know whether the main subject is the wrecked car in the front, which is slightly blurred, or whether it's the other wrecked cars on the middle layer, which are more in focus. Here, it might initially seem like the dog is the main character, but there's also the person and all the sheep. So everything becomes open to the interpretation of the viewer. At times, there's clearly no single main character. For example, here, the camels are all main characters. And in this case, it could be the father or the son. In some cases, you have layers, but there might be no main character at all. Is it the starry sky? Is it the bit of the building? Or is it the darkness? What I've mentioned are some ideas. You could and you should experiment as much as possible. And here's something else. You can compose in layers to achieve a couple or even all of the things I've mentioned simultaneously. In fact, you'll often find that you've already done this and only realized in retrospect. These elements in the foreground create a sense of place. We're in a kitchen at a table. This also adds to the sense of story. We're guests or we're hanging out in an intimate setting. And then the bit of blur and just the way the eye goes through the frame creates a sense of space and depth. Same deal here. Prayer flags, place, culture, story. A slight blur and guiding of the eye, a sense of depth. It's not all about layers all the time though. While I did say that a lot of the photography masters compose with layers in mind, this doesn't mean that a photo with layers is by default superior all the time. Sometimes there's power in the flat two-dimensional representation, or even in minimalism. But if you're looking to add complexity, a sense of space, place, to make your photos more nuanced, then composing in layers is definitely an idea to explore. For those who celebrate Christmas is just around the corner, uh, the new year is near, new resolutions, new journeys, and I know that we all hope that we can come back with some great photos from those journeys, but here's something that I hear all too often. I wish that I took photography more seriously, because my trip was amazing, but I have no decent photos to show. So, you regret things, you have missed opportunities. If you think that they will come again, then no, I can tell you from personal experiences that they don't. And uh, I will shamelessly mention my travel photography course one last time because I think this is a good uh, occasion. Uh, it's designed to help you make the most of those opportunities. It's a way to get more serious about photography. One last time, the link is on the screen and in the description below. So that's it. Happy holiday season. Happy New Year. Uh, I hope that it'll bring you plenty of photo opportunities and more importantly, I hope that you make the most of them. I'm gonna do my part here on YouTube by posting more tips and more ideas. Now, before I go, I wanna say one thing. I wanna thank you. Uh, you could be anywhere, you could be watching anything, but you are giving me the time and watching this and I don't take that for granted. So, thank you very much and see you next year. Well you'll see me. I might see you if we cross paths. You never know. It has happened. Goodbye for now.